What is going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And join me today for part one of the Thor Comprehensive Reading Order in Collected Editions. Stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before I get started, a huge thank you to our patrons for voting for the Thor Reading Order. Every month I put up a poll on our Patreon where our patrons vote for the next reading order. And this month they have chosen Thor, and this is part one. There will be a part two coming out next week. Um, and also they voted for written documentations. So if you want written documentation of the reading orders, check out our Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you to our existing patrons. Now, we've got a lot to talk about, and this is gonna be a little hard because I have to stay away from spoilers, even though these stories are from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and some from the 90s. But I'm gonna try to do my best because Thor has a very complicated storyline. And that's the main thing I have to try to stay away from because he has many origins and retcons. So we're kicking off this reading order with this epic collection, The Mighty Thor Volume 1, The God of Thunder. Let's get started. So here we are with Volume 1. This is where everything begins with Journey into Mystery number 83, the first appearance of The Mighty Thor in the Marvel Comics universe. Now, We've had three Omnis of the Thor run. Um, I think right now Volumes 1 and 2 are out of print. Um, but this is the way that I decided to collect them. There's also Masterworks available. I know that I mentioned that from time to time. But those are like the high-end books. And they're wonderful, but I stopped collecting them about a decade ago because mainly they got too pricey. And then we had Omnis. And then that's funny because I ended up selling my Omnis to replace them with this Epic Collections. I don't know why. Um, I did that with Avengers and Captain America. But regardless, there are three Omnis that collect some of these epics, and then th we have the epic collections. So, let's talk about Thor, Volume 1. This is where everything begins. This is what Stan Lee and Jack Kirby created. And before we are introduced to Thor, we are introduced to this gentleman right here, Donald Blake, who's on vacation in Norway during an alien invasion. And he goes into a cave, finds a staff, and gets frustrated because, you know, he has to use the staff in order to help him walk. And when he hits the staff on a rock, he turns into the mighty Thor. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. And that's where everything begins, right? But it's interesting because this is a different kind of Thor back then. We have Thor who had an alter ego of Donald Blake. And Thor is a different character. So he was superhero by night, and then during the day, well, or when he needed to be, he was a doctor, Dr. Donald Blake. And this first volume also introduces us to Loki, his brother, right, or his half-brother, rather. Of course, that origin has been retold time and time again. And Loki sometimes is good, sometimes is bad, most of the time is bad. I mean, he is the god of mischief. And then we're also introduced uh, to other supporting cast members here. We have Odin, Jane Foster, the love of his life, or... I mean, part of the reason why he was kind of banished. But that's all you really need to know back then, right? Is that he had an alter ego of Donald Blake. Uh, this volume also introduces us to Lady Sif, Surtur, Hela, and the Enchantress. So, let's move on to volume two. When Titans Clash. This is volume two of the Epic Collection. Again, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby with a couple of other inkers here. And like always, I'll put what's collected in here somewhere on the video. But now Donald Blake is kind of growing more and more fond of this lady, Jane Foster. And Thor, we're introduced to these backup tales because Journey into Mystery is now turning into a Thor book. It's less and less of a Journey into Mystery anthology and Thor just keeps blowing up. Oh, and I forgot to mention that his mystical hammer that he holds is called Mjolnir. We are into the years where Journey into Mystery is literally Journey into Mystery with the mighty Thor. So all the stories within Journey into Mystery are basically Thor stories, even the tales of Asgard. So they started these backup tales to tell you a little bit of background about the characters, especially when uh, Thor and Loki were young, or the wars that happened, what led to Asgard being the way that it is. Um... But this volume right here serves as an introduction of mainly the this guy right here, the Absorbing Man. And also we're introduced to these three... Oh, the Destroyer, of course. Um, we're introduced to these three warriors here. We have the Swashbuckling Fandral, uh, the Warrior Hogan, and then the big 
Happy Dude, Volstag, and those are, of course, are the Warrior Three, who have been a big part of Thor's supporting cast since this volume. Uh, this is also the volume where we have the fight with Hercules, where Jack Kirby and Stanley decided to put God up against God and see who would win. Now, something huge happens here too. We have Journey into Mystery number 125. However, Journey into Mystery number 126, with this classic cover, becomes the Mighty Thor. So no longer Journey into Mystery, the title has been renamed to the Mighty Thor. And of course, it's that epic clash between Hercules and Thor. And right now is where I like to sneak things in, of course. And if you want to keep reading more about Thor and him teaming up with this group of people here, well, look no further than the Avengers collected an epic collection as well as Omnis. Because a lot of this was foreshadowed in Journey into Mystery, honestly. But the title went on and Thor became a huge part of the Avengers, so he was one of the founding members, and it's all found in the first volume. And back to volume three. This volume is pretty interesting. It's still Stan Lee, still Jack Kirby. They had a long run on uh, Thor, but this one really shows Thor going into outer space, and Jack Kirby just seems to have a lot of fun with this one. Uh, he introduces a lot of cosmic characters to the world of Thor and the mythos of Thor, and he seems to spend more and more time in outer space. Like, we get to learn a lot about the mythical realm of Asgard through these pages. Jack Kirby even tries out some new things with his art that you saw kind of in Fantastic Four, where he takes, like, a real picture and draws on top of it. There's also the introduction of uh, the Wrecker, the High Evolutionary, and Ego, the Living Planet. And then, of course, this guy right here, Ulick. He has a big fight with him for a couple of issues, and you start seeing issues continue into the next issue. And, you know, that's the, that was the Marvel way of storytelling back then. You saw a standalone issue, and then everything changed, basically with Fantastic Four, where part one was in issue 125, part two was in issue 126, and so on. He fights a Super Scroll, and then there's a huge fight with the Wrecker. Um, and I always thought the Wrecker was kind of a joke, uh, but honestly, going back and reading this, I can see why people thought he was a big threat. I mean, he did knock Thor out, and literally almost killed him. Now... Everything's about to change. Remember when I said that Donald Blake is his alter ego? And you see less and less of Donald Blake, especially in this volume. Well, everything you knew about Thor is about to change with this volume. And like I mentioned, I'm not going to try to do too many spoilers. Now, this particular volume is so different than my other epics because this one has this, like, really thin, glossy paper. This is the Wake the Mangog. So, of course, the Mangog makes an appearance here. We start talking about Ragnarok and what it is. And for those of you that have seen the movie, it's a little bit different towards the beginning, the origin of Ragnarok and Surtur and all that. However, the main selling point to this is we get to find out in this issue right here, 159, the answers at last. Who Thor really is and who Donald Blake is. Is Donald Blake really Thor? Is Thor just what he turns into with memories of Donald Blake? Well... As it turns out, this is, I want to say this is one of the earliest retcons as far as uh, Marvel in the Silver Age, but Odin stripped away Thor of his powers because he wanted to teach his son humility, and he m sent him to Earth, and he had no memory of who he was, so that kind of changes the dynamic between Donald Blake and Thor, right? Not much of a spoiler, I'm sure a lot of you already knew that, but that was one of the biggest reveals back then. Again, more of the galactic stuff and less and less of being on Earth. Oh, and we're also introduced to, of course, him, who turns out to be later on renamed into Adam Warlock, plays a big part in the Marvel Cosmic Universe. All right, let's keep moving. So here we have the fall of Asgard. And this changes the dynamic of the creative team. We have Jack Kirby leaving the book. Uh, Jerry Conway steps in as um, a... I think he does a couple of issues. Uh, Neil Adams steps in as an artist for a couple of issues. And then we have the phenomenal Big John Buscema step in and become the ongoing artist for a long time on Thor. But here is some Neil Adams work showcasing some of this. And pretty much this volume focuses a lot on Loki trying to be a schemer and, and going behind the scenes and building up 
um, the character of Loki for who everybody remembers him to be now. It's very Loki-centric. Like, a lot of this volume was. I remember reading it, and, I, and, you know, I thought Loki was a character that would just appear from time to time. But he, in the early days, he is all over the place on Thor. Uh, besides the Warriors 3 and Lady Sif and Odin, we're also introduced to Baldur the Brave. And he appeared actually in Volume 3, if I'm not mistaken, of the Epic Collections. But here we have now Big John stepping in as the ongoing artist. Stan Lee still writing it. And then you have Joe Sinat still inking it. So he kind of gives it a little bit of that Kirby look to Big John's artwork. So you can see you saw Mephisto in here. You saw the Silver Surfer. So we're still dealing with a lot of cosmic characters. And it's pretty interesting because... Thor really ties heavily into the cosmic universe. You know, because I, as a kid, the first book I read was... Well, hold on. I'll talk about it when I get there. And next up is Into the Dark Nebula. We have Jerry Conway now as the main writer. Uh, Stan Lee still doing some of the plotting. And then, of course, Big John Buscema drawing most of the book. Now, I've done an overview of this um, on the channel before. So... If you want to go back and take a deeper look into it uh, there's a video playlist for epic collections if you want to check that out and but this is pretty much just serves as a journey it's a really cool story uh, there is a little bit of rehashing especially if you're reading these back to back to some of the previous stories that Stan Lee told but pretty much it's the story of how Odin sends uh, Thor and the Warriors 3, so you have Fandral, Hogan, and Volstagg, who always hang out together. And he sends them on a quest to find the Twilight Well. And Lady Sif is sent to the Black World, right? And then it becomes a whole rescue mission later on. But you have characters like Mephisto show up. And there's some pretty cool things that happen in here, in these pages. So as I mentioned, it's not that Jerry Conway's stories were bad. It's just that he seems to reuse a lot of the plot lines that we've seen before. And I think by now, since Stan Lee and Jack Kirby had walked away, people were ready to move on to something new. Next up, we have Thor If Asgard Should Perish. And this is one of the Marvel hardcovers. Uh, they were called the Marvel Premiere hardcovers. These predate the Epic Collections. So we didn't know about Epic Collections back then, and we thought this was a really cool and affordable way to collect classic stories. I mean, these almost feel like a masterwork, but that's why I got a couple of these, and since then have replaced a bunch with Epic Collections. But this is Len Wein, writing the story of Thor now, still Big John Buscema and Joe Sinat uh, inking it. Well, John, Big John doing the pencils and uh, Joe Sinat doing the inks. And this pretty much has a couple of stories in it. So the first story has to deal with uh, Zarko, the Tomorrow Man. And Thor with the Warriors 3 must save the planet from being destroyed by the Time Twisters. And the next part has something to do with a character named El Lobo, who wants to take over this country uh, where uh, fire with Fire Lord. And most of the book, though, has a lot to do... Uh, the overall arc of this is about saving and stopping Odin. And why exactly? Well, I will let you find that out by reading these. The Quest for Odin. That's right, spoilers in the title. Uh, because Odin is missing. He is gone from Asgard. Now it's up to Thor and the Warriors 3, Baldur and Sif, to go and find him. So Thor goes... Thor and his friends go across space to go and try to find Odin to figure out where he is. And, of course, he runs into his previous enemies. Uh, this one has some artwork by Walter Simonson as well as Big John Buscema. So John's kind of trying to step back a little bit because I'm sure he was working on every other book at Marvel. Now, after this, there is a trade paperback called Thor, Gods, Gladiators, and the Guardians of the Galaxy. But me and my ever-growing wisdom decided to sell that because I thought there would be an epic by now. But that collects issues 267 to 271 and annuals 5 and 6. And what I remember most about this volume is that there's this huge battle between Thor and Odin. And, of course, you got to throw Loki in there who's trying to take the throne of Asgard while everybody's fighting. So here we have this really skinny trade paperback. Um, I'm sure I'll replace it when it, an epic collection comes out. But this is Thor Ragnarok. You may have heard of that movie. That movie's literally based on my childhood run of Thor. And we'll talk about that when I get there. And I can't wait to talk about that book. It's going to be hard to keep this under 30 minutes, I swear. So let's keep going. Uh, Loki is back. There's an attack by the Midgard Serpent. Uh, you have the death of a beloved character. 
the sacrifice of Odin. And of course, you also have big battles with giants and trolls. And did I mention Loki? I think I did. Thor, the Eternal Saga. Both of these books will be collected in one complete collection later on this year or early next year, by the way. But this is Roy Thomas, and you have Walter Simonson, Ernie Chang, who... Ernie Chan is probably one of my favorite inkers um, recently. Well, I guess in the last couple of years because of his run on um, Conan the Barbarian. So you also have Big John Buscema drawing some of this stuff in here. But this is pretty interesting because this is Roy Thomas trying to bring in, or successfully, not trying, to bring in the Eternals into the Marvel Universe. So it, it's, it talks about a forgotten chapter in the... Um, pre-Donald Blake life. So we haven't even talked about Donald Blake in forever. But this all happens in the past for the most part. Uh, and then we jump back to the present. So it's 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 got a lot to do with Celestials. And then Odin, of course, his scheme backfiring on him. But you get to meet the Eternals uh, through the eyes of Thor here. And like I said, these are like, these work as a forgotten chapter. Thor, a kingdom lost. And I don't think it was the only thing lost. I feel like the editorial team was lost because you have so many creators here. You have Ralph Macchio. Uh, you also have Chris Claremont, Doug Minch, just to name a few of the creators that helped write Thor. And then Keith Poehler joins uh, the artist team. But you also have Rick Leonardi, Bob Hall, Alan Cooperberg, and Gil Kane. So it seems like this is like a huge um, mesh of just creators trying to write one continuing story of Thor. So, I don't notice this one does bounce a little bit all over the place. So, it kicks off with Thor trying to come back to Midgard, of course. That's what we call Earth. or I'm sorry, that's what they call Earth. And it basically focuses more on Donald Blake trying to readjust into uh, city life. So, we also have the return of one of my favorite uh, characters, and that is Queen Carnilla. And I love her design, this uh, lady right here. And, of course, we have Loki. I mean, what is a Thor story for one year without Loki? Uh, he also ends up fighting the new Wrecking Crew. And the Wrecking Crew are not even his most formidable foes in this particular book. He ends up fighting a couple of uh, Galactus's ex-heralds, if you will. But it's got some really nice artwork. And then towards the last third of the book, we go back to Asgard, where Odin's been hanging out and trying to change things there. And right now, I just want to remind everybody to smash that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. Let's get back to it. So next up, we have Thor RuneQuest. I got to keep on moving. Got to make this a little faster. Okay, so most of this here is drawn by Alan Cooperberg. We have Doug Mensch writing most of the story. Uh, this one pretty much just shows Thor fighting all kinds of villains again. Darkoth, uh, Graviton, uh, the Crusader. And then he also encounters, this is a really cool thing that I, I have to talk about, but he encounters Dracula in these pages. And I thought that was a really cool thing. I love when they bring the Marvel horror into the Marvel Universe. By this time, Jane Foster has kind of taken a backseat because Thor's been on and off again with Lady Sif. And this is the Dracula story. But now, he's searching for Jane Foster. And it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty uh, cool twist what they end up doing with Jane in these particular stories here. But all of this leads into Thor by Walter Simonson. Oh, gosh, I love this omnibus. This changes right off the bat the entire mythos of Thor. Uh, we are introduced to this character here, Beta Ray Bill. And this isn't much of a spoiler. I'm sure a lot of you all know this. But before this... You know, Thor, Odin's son, was the only, Donald Blake, was the only one that could carry the hammer. Mjolnir, right? He's the only one that could lift Mjolnir. And this rewrites everything. Because all this time we thought he was worthy. And there have been other characters that have been hinted at being worthy. But this is the first time that we actually see someone else worthy of Mjolnir. And that is Beta Ray Bill. So that changes everything, right? And then we have Throg, the Frog Thor. Um, we have Donald Blake trying to adjust to becoming like a construction worker. But this is Walter Simonson's run. Not only that, but we are also introduced to uh, Malekith, the Accursed, right? So we're introduced to like some Thor Corp, uh, the idea of that. There's a Mutant Massacre crossover within these pages. This book is, oh gosh. Oh man, I, I can't talk about this, but... 
the ending of the story, manly tears. Every time. Every time. Freaking Scourge the Executioner. Oh, man. So well written. So many of the changes that happened to Thor all come from this. A lot of the elements that were borrowed for Thor Ragnarok the movie came from this. Now, I'm sure you can probably tell the Omnibus is recolored. So, we have modernized colors on them. It bothers some people. Doesn't bother others. Doesn't really bother me. But, I'm pretty sure when the epics come out, they will be the original color. By the way, my Omnibus is the very first printing. Uh, the second printing is a lot thinner. It's not as thick as this one. So, I think the second printing has a better build, too. So, if you've not read it, if, if, you, if I'm to suggest any run of Thor out of these videos that I'm doing, out of these two videos this one for sure and y'all know i love jason aaron we're not there yet but this for sure the art the story the changes that he makes and all the things that you thought you knew about thor all of that changes oh it's so damn good all right all right let's keep on going now one of the unfortunate things about walter simonson's run on thor is it overshadows this magnificent run right here and this is tom defalco's run on thor He's joined by Ron Friends, and it is phenomenal. It doesn't get talked about, like, at all. Nobody talks about the Tom DeFalco run. Well, I say nobody. I mean, most of the time when you think of Thor, people are like, oh, yeah, you've read the Walter Simonson run, right? No one really says, have you read the Tom DeFalco run? Because he had a stellar run on this, not just this, but also Fantastic Four and his Spider-Girl is so freaking good. But he himself like changes so many things and the main thing that he is known for uh, there's this huge fight with the celestials at the beginning by the way but the main thing out of this book is the introduction of this character named eric kevin masterson who is working as an architect when he meets thor and then he gets injured by this falling girder during a fight and taken to the hospital now he's walking on crutches he becomes an essential part of thor in the next few volumes but that's the main thing that happens in the well not the main thing there's a lot of cool uh fights there's guest stars with the avengers in here and cap the captain when he was going as the captain that's steve rogers but let's keep moving so here we have immortal flesh it's a cool cover and again tom defalco writing most of this stuff ron friends there's a couple guest writers in here but the big thing about this book right here is this takes place during the Acts of Vengeance. And who is introduced during the Acts of Vengeance in issue 411? Oh, and he gets a cool costume too for a while. Yes. Okay, okay. But who is introduced in 411? This issue right here. Yes, the fight with the Juggernaut is really cool. And yes, Beta Ray Bill shows up in the Tales of Asgard story. But who shows up at the end of this? Only the greatest team of the 90s. And that is the New Warriors. There's Beta Ray Bill right there. Oh, man, you all know I love the New Warriors. So it's, I remember when these characters showed up, I was like, these are so, the guy's fighting in a, on a skateboard. This is so stupid. I ended up falling in love with the book. So this is where they first appeared during the Acts of Vengeance. And yes, there's a whole fight with the Wrecking Crew where Ulick joins the Wreck Wrecking Crew. Uh, Doctor Strange and the Thing make an appearance as well as Quasar as a team up with that. Let's keep going with the Black Galaxy. You remember that character, Eric Masterson, I was talking about? How he was about to play an important role in Thor's life? Well, that happens within these pages. So, in these pages, to save Thor's life, Odin places his son in the body of Eric Masterson, who also happens to be a single father, right? And then he stays in there. So, he has the memory of Eric Masterson. Thor is just banished, right? That's the whole mystery. What happens in how he comes back i will leave you to find that out but that is such a cool turn and twist on thor's life right we have now eric masterson with the memories of eric masterson and the power of thor and he is thor for quite a while as a matter of fact he's thor in the next big story arc and that is avengers operation galactic storm also available as an epic collection hopefully one day we'll get an oversized hardcover but this is a crossover with the avengers and honestly, this is the pre-Civil War where they don't agree with their methods and ethics of doing things, uh, where the team separates. But pretty much it's the story of the Kree and Shi'ar War, right? The scrolls take a back seat and the Shi'ar and Kree are at war. And a lot of things change for people. And during this time, Eric Masterson is Thor. So this is a pretty big event. 
And like I said, this collects issues of Thor. The next time you see Thor, and next up is Avengers Fear the Reaper. The reason I kept this in here is because it has this Citizen Kang crossover event. This is uh, during the, what is it, Fantastic Four, Captain America, and Avengers and Thor crossover. So this was collected before in one trade paperback, but it's been replaced by this epic collection here. So, you, I mean, unless you want to keep that trade paperback, that's up to you all. But this is the next place you need to go. And I threw this in here because it's part of the Mighty Thor run. And some of these issues are not collected in the epic format yet. But this also collects the ongoing series Thunderstrike, right? What happens when Thor comes back and how he comes back. I'll leave you to find that out. And he sees Eric Masterson as Thor. Well, he's not too happy about that, right? So then... Eric Masterson has to take on a new identity, and that is this dude right there, Thunderstrike. He, I think his issues lasted about 24, if, and then something happens towards the end of that run that I don't think Tom DeFalco wanted to do, but that's another story. So, Odin's son is back as Thor. This is Thor, Blood, and Thunder, but he's gone berserk. So, what happens? Well, the most powerful heroes in the universe have to team up to try to stop him. So we got Beta Ray Bill, Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange, Drax the Destroyer, Adam Warlock, and even Thanos jumps in here to try to help and calm Thor down. This, by the way, this is Tom Grinberg's artwork, and I always talk about how people have a love-hate relationship with this artist. I love his art. To me, it's like a mix of Frank Frazetta and Mike Mignola, and I realize I, I am crazy. But that's how I feel about his artwork. Uh, he was drawing issues of Silver Surfer at the time. And, yeah, there's Beta Ray Bill. So, you know, this crosses over with Warlock Chronicles and Warlock and the Infinity Watch and, of course, the Silver Surfer issues. But it does have a big chunk of Thor in here. By now, Ron Mars has taken over the book. And Ron Mars was also writing a lot of those cosmic titles, including Silver Surfer. And there's the fight with Thanos. And that takes us to what I think will be the final Thor epic collection, volume 23. This is World Engine. Look at that freaking cover. That is Mike Deodato Jr. before he blew up uh, after his run on Wonder Woman. So it kicks off with a four-issue storyline by Warren Ellis, right? This is the storyline called World Engine. And, okay, th I'll be honest, this, this, uh, this particular epic collection is also all over the place like thor has his godhood and power stripped by i don't know uh odin for some reason it's never really explained and then when william messner Loeb's takes over the book and i love william messner's Loeb's run on uh, wonder woman and flash and actually his run on thor had some hits too but by the time he takes over the book we kind of forget about that this basically is the last story of thor right there's the final crossover here with the Avengers. Uh, also, Thor gets a whole new costume here with a cod piece and everything. And honestly, the costume first originates here in the pages of Avengers The Crossing. You know I have to talk about this book always. But that's this. I would read this before reading this book. And this also serves as a purpose to say goodbye to Thor. Because Thor is about to leave the Marvel Universe. He's about to go on a journey. But before he goes on that journey, before we get to part two, this event needs to happen. And this is Onslaught. So everything that happens in the Marvel Universe, why these characters get shifted over to a parallel universe known as the Heroes Reborn Universe happens because of Onslaught. So during this crossover event with the Avengers and the X-Men and pretty much the entire Marvel Universe, and nothing will ever be the same. I realize they say that every year with every event, but to an extent, there was some truth to this. Because Thor Volume 1, what started with Journey into Mystery, is about to come to an end with Issue 502. Now, Journey into Mystery, the comic, continues from uh, Marvel, but that's for Part 2. We'll wait to discuss that. For now, we're talking about this shift and change. And all that happens because of this entity known as Onslaught. During the final battle with our Marvel heroes, takes the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, including Thor, and the Hulk into another universe. And of course, that universe is the Heroes Reborn universe, where creators like Rob Liefeld, Mark Silvestri, um, Jim Lee, not Mark Silvestri, that's just wishful thinking on my part, Wills Protasio, um, pretty much get to write and draw the Marvel characters again. 
So this is pretty much the storyline where all of that ends. This is available in trade paperback as well as this omnibus. And then we get Heroes Reborn. But that's for part two. And that, as they say, is that. Now, some of these books are available from our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was part one of the comprehensive reading order of Thor and Collected Editions. Don't forget to come back next week for part two, where we will be discussing everything from the Heroes Reborn era all the way to the current Thor run by Donny Cates. Again, thank you so much to our patrons for voting for this. Every month, like I mentioned, I have a poll up on our Patreon. All of that information to get to our Patreon is in the descriptions down below. If you want written documentation of this, it will be also in our Patreon. So check it out if you want to. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so. More importantly, please everybody, stay healthy, stay safe. Much love to all of you.